So my presentation, I will start my presentation now. So I will start by introducing Python and I will talk about the setups necessary to integrate it. I will make some examples and I will start, uh, I will end with conclusion and some, and some questions. So now let's start with, by describing Python. So Python is a, a high level programming language. It's like LabVIEW. It's also an high level lang programming language. It's also interpreted like LabVIEW and it's not compiled. And, but uh, contrary to uh, LabVIEW, it's loosely coupled. Uh, that means that uh, there is no need to say what is the, the purpose of the function. So the, the methods. So when you call a, an add, for instance, you can add strings, you can add integers, in the doubles, and the Python treats the, treats the add regarding to the, the, the attributes that he received. So it's not like love you because in the add, if you, if you put a string, you have an error. The Python is free and available on all major platforms. So you can download it, it's free. And uh, regarding the major platforms, in uh, if you are using, for instance, Compact Rios, uh, it's also in Linux, you can use the, the, the Python in there. And uh, if you have a computer with a Linux installed, you don't have to normally do nothing because uh, Python normally comes pre-installed in all distributions of LabVIEW of of the sorry of Linux. So Python was created by Guido van Rassen, and uh, Python normally is associated with a snake, but in reality, the name comes from Matty Python's Flying Circus because that was a series that uh, the inventor Guido van Rossen liked a lot. Python is used for web and internet also, and you can see that those developments in Dropbox, for instance, Uber, Spotify, Pinterest. So they are all the, all the sites that are developed using Python. Python uses uh, a pip, pip that makes the packages. To, so to install and maintain all the packages, you have pip. It's like in LabVIEW, you have uh, package manager, so pip is a package manager. So you can install and manage the, the, all the, the packages that you have. There are a large community in, of Python developers and uh, there are a lot of uh, numerical packages such as cpy and numpy. Uh, I already saw that there is also uh, a new or re relatively new pa package. It's called uh, any so now you can interact with uh, any DACMC hardware using Python because there are uh, there is a, a package developed to interact with uh, all the hardware from NI. So in Python is from 1999 and with Roman Rusen when when making the Python established some goals. He wanted it to be easy to to use and intuitive, so and it wanted it to be open source. The code could be understand in English. I will show that later on that you can see that it's easy to read, and it's suitable for every task because it involves short development times. There is also an application in Python and Jupyter Notebooks that is interactive shell. So it's a page for the for Internet Explorer that where it, you can develop uh, Python and uh, interactively it, it gives you results. So it's a little thing. It's easier to develop Python in there. Uh, Python, ePython and Jupyter Notebooks normally is installed with Anaconda, but taking into account that Anaconda is not free. So Python is free, but uh, the 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 package Anaconda, uh, if it's for non-commercial use, it's free. But for commercial use, it's uh, paid. But you can install the Python and Jupyter uh, side, uh, 
getting the, the, the from the, the sites, getting the, the pack, the, the parts of the package and that part is free. So some advantage of Python is that it's very easy to learn. And so the time needed to is shorter than on many others. It's easy to teach because it's easy to learn. So it's easy to teach and it's easy to write new software. It's also easy to understand because it's in plain English. So it's normally it's easy to understand by everyone. And it's easy to get because it's free and uh, it's cross platform. So a program developed on Windows as this is not compiled, this is interpreted. If you send it to a person in, in Linux or in Unix or something, if they have the interpreter, the Python interpreter, they can use that code without changes. So in contrary to the platforms where the for instance, you see that it is compiled. If you compile a C program in Windows, it only works on Windows. Uh, if you work in uh, 64 bits, it doesn't work on 32 bits, for instance. So Python is more user friendly and cross platform. Some drawbacks, like all, all technologies, it has some drawbacks. Python doesn't offer an exceptional performance. And this is due to the fact that it's not compiled. So all, all, whenever you use it, it compiles it on background. And that takes some time. That's why Python is not exceptional fast. Debugging Python is not that, it's more difficult than in other languages because as Python is, uh, is a, there is a, a shell it, you can it's not easy to step go step by step but uh, for instance if you use epython uh, you can uh, go step by step or in each step you can have the results of that step so you can have some like prints for that step and in that way it could be easier to to read mistakes but as this is a simple language it's more simple to to learn and do to teach uh, it's not normal to have big mistakes so it's it's uh it's harder to to look, see the mistakes but it's harder also to make the mistakes so it's not that much pr a problem python also isn't bad is bad for low level programming it's normally it's clo called close to metal so when you are implementing uh, graphics graphic engine or a driver uh, python is very bad because as it's not compiled it takes a lot of time for uh, for that so LaView, for instance is not compiled but if you use it in LaView fpga for instance that's compiled and it's extremely fast so in python you don't have the you cannot make a compiled part more fast let's say Python is not very good at the mobile apps, but as there is a great community due to the fact that this Python is free, it's gaining traction and it, there all the time there are new packages to develop mobile applications. Now let's talk about the version in Python. Sorry. So there are two main types of Python, Python 2 and Python 3. Python 3 is very different from Python 2. It's not an upgrade of Python 2. Uh, but there are uh, quite uh, some differences in Python 3 that makes them more uh, readable, let's say, than in Python 2. But despite this fact, that Python 3 is more advanced and should be only, only, always used. Python 2 is all already, uh, there are developments of new versions because there are a lot of software made on Python 2 and they don't want to, to rule out the development. The, la the last version of Python is 3.9, but whenever in used in conjunction with LaView, it's best to use the 
because this is the version that is recommended to use in LabVIEW. So National Instruments recommends 3.6. It says that all the other versions can be used, but they are not recommended. So they may have some mistakes. Uh, I think the, uh, so Python, uh, uh, Python nodes are used prior uh, after LabVIEW 2018. And uh, I think that uh, LabVIEW 2021 will uh, be upgrading the Python 3.6 from to 3.8, I think. So uh, if you are using Py uh, LabVIEW, the new version of LabVIEW 2021, you may have to, to use 3.6. It's uh, it will be uh, recommended for the for for from NI. But yeah, as you know, LabVIEW has also a more has also advantages than Python. So for the LabVIEW point is that it's used for measurement and testing for an inspection. GUIs are better normally in LabVIEW. So to make a setup to use in a in a factory, normally it's easier to do a, a GUI that is touch sensitive, for instance, in LabVIEW than in Python. LabVIEW is used for flying tests, for instance, motion control, medical imaging, and also time critical applications as it is uh, compiled in FPGA. Time critical is a, a, a bonus on, on LabVIEW. In Python, we don't have this bonus for time critical applications or embedding systems in the bad effect. And uh, I, I, I already use this for inspection, inspection of uh, pipelines. So in my previous job, I was doing uh, La LabVIEW to test to pipeline defects. But it also it's also used in wafer inspection, for instance, in the computers industry. So for the setup, uh, normally you start by downloading version 3.6 uh, and you have to pay attention that it should have the same bitness as LabVIEW. I don't know if you know what is bitness. It's uh, so. Uh, it's like this. If it's LabVIEW, I, my version of LabVIEW, it's 2020, 32 bits. So you have to download and install Python 3.6, 32 bits, because it's the only one com that I, is compatible. Com compatible. After installing the, the Python, you can install the packages. You run on command prompt, you run command prompt, uh, remember to, to use it as, ad, as an administrator if you install it on uh, program files because Windows will block the program file directory and only the administrator has rights to, to uh, change some things in there. So if you want to change it, you have to do it this. After that, you can install the, the pip, uh, normal pap, when you install pip, it install automatically, but you can upgrade it. So the code to upgrade it, it's this, because you can, uh, no, the my, my when I installed the 3.6, the version was pip, I think it was pip 15, and now it's pip uh, 23. So it has some benefits and uh, it, it searches more widely, so it's advisable to use the last upgrade. After that, you can install the packages needed. In my case, I installed NumPy and Matplotlib and OpenCV Python. OpenCV, it's to image or image man manipulation. There is a list of available of all the available packages. You can find it in here. Uh, let's see if I I'll open it. So. You can find it in here, the, all the packages. There are a lot of packages. And for instance, one of the, the ones that I, I spoke, it's anydacmshish. So you have anydacmshish. So if you want to make a program in Python that interacts with an NIR hardware, you install anydacmshish, you have big pip. And afterwards, you can use it in the pipe development.
This is also called cheese chop. And uh, that name uh, derives from uh, one of the episodes of Monty Python's Flying Circus. So all Python is uh, developed you know, thinking about Monty Python's because it was a series that the developer uh, was very fond of. Uh, but the more relevant packages, in, instead of seeing that those 300k plus, uh, you can see this the, in this site, the, the more relevant, the ones that it's normally used, let's say, and uh, it's these ones. Uh, so I'm using CPy and NumPy are the same. Uh, OpenCV, I think it's somewhere in here, probably because it's for images. So it, these ones are the, the more, more used OpenCV, it's image processing. So as you can see, uh, depending on, the, on what you are doing, there are a lot of libraries already developed for it. So it's easier to develop Python code. Uh, one of the things I, I advise is that you, div, that you Download Visual Studio Code. This is free. So this is a free software. And uh, it has a very good interaction with Python. And uh, it, uh, it's, uh, I like the, the words and uh, it com completes the, when we are coding, it completes the code. So it's very easy. And uh, I advise this Visual Studio Code because Besides using the to Python, you can use it in C, for instance, or in Java. So it's it's the it's very widespread. So it's not necessary to have one one program to develop one one language. You can have one program and develop a number of languages if you you are not developing just that language. Let's say. Now uh, it's time for some examples. Uh, let's close this. So some simple examples: our our integration new works, and uh, and I will explain how this works loosely coupled. So so this is a, a simple VI. So uh, in here you have the. the the controls, the numeric controls, and the numerical indicator. And here you have uh, strings and string indicator. So if you see the code for this, I don't know what why this ends up. Okay. So you start by opening the connection to Python. In the, my case, is 3.6 version. So uh, love uh, and I. Uh, uh, thinks that the best ones are 3.6 and uh, if you are using Python 2 is 2.7 so you open a connection to Python after opening the connection you can use it so we, this is the Python node and uh, the first thing is that you you have to to put the what you are expecting the the result to be so the this is the, the element, the type of the element that is, the result is. So I'm expecting a double, so I, I'll connect the double. And uh, there are two parameters, A, a and B. And uh, I received the C. And uh, this is doubled because I already said that it was a double. And I have to, to, to say where the, the, the node, this is the, the path to the, the Python file. And this is the name of the function. So I will show you the the functions. So this is the Python. This is the the Python file. So it's a simple file. So in this part, it's only to test. It's not necessary. It's only to test because if I want to to run the code and see if all everything is running right i can run it in here and uh, if a is equal to three and b equal three to four i'll sum the two numbers and i 
and it returns me seven. So this part is the one used in LabVIEW. This is the description of the of the of the function. This is part is not necessary, but if you put it when you over over the number of the name, you you get a pop up saying what that function does. So in reality, you would have to only to do this. With this code, as you can see, it, when it, we were when it is called, it will return C. The function is sum. Yeah. But now uh, uh, I'll speak about loosely coupled. So if the same same function is called, expecting a string and giving a string as uh, two strings as uh, parameters, I'll re return a string. This cannot be done in LabVIEW because if you are adding, let's say in LabVIEW, it only can add numbers, no, numeric values, not strings. But in Python, as it's loosely coupled, it knows how to do the 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 function for several types of parameters. So if I run this, I will it will go to Python and. As expected, this is we see, and and this the sum of the two of two is appended. So that is how the the Python uh, does a uh, an add of a string. Due to to being loosely coupled, uh, the problem is that if you are sending parameters outside of the, what you are expect of. of the normal scope, let's say, for the net, for instance, if you are sending strings, you may have a result not expected. Because, for instance, if you have a, a division and you make uh, and you send strings, I don't know what it will do. But so uh, that's the limitation of loosely uh, coupling. So it's something that uh, it's good. Because you don't have to to worry about the type of the data that you are sending, but uh, there's also drawbacks, drawbacks, because maybe the the result is not what you expected from it, from this. After that, I have a more complex. So when in a, in which this is a more complex uh, setup, in which okay, let's see the code. So this is more complex, and uh, this one uses already some of the some of the packages. So what, uh, as in the, the previous one, I'm opening it. I'm using gener generate sign, so it generates a sign. Uh, I can see, I can see I can put the code. So this is the complex. So it uses the sign it's generating the sign so this is the as referred previously this is the, the description that appears in here when it's in here so it generates a sine wave and it calculates an fft so it calculates fft in here so and this is the main it's not used it's just used for uh, the uh, purposes of uh, debugging so this one generates sign, and as you could see, uh, it's not obliged to to put in Python just one uh, one element uh, getting out. So it's possible to to have Python to to return more than one element. But for that, you put it in a in a cluster. So for instance, I want to receive two arrays. So I put a cluster, I make a cluster with two arrays and developed the the thing that are I'm, retu I'm returning is a, is, an, is a cluster with two arrays. So you you can and the, in uh, in Python that is called a tuple. So uh, it returns a tuple. It's it's in here. So so it's called FTP. So it generates sign. Uh, you have the three parameters. It is sampling rate, wave frequency, and amplitude. So you have in here three parameters. 
that you put and the output would be two parameters in this case it's a, an array with time and an array with result that is the values of the same wave so you put it in a, in a cluster the two arrays and you receive the value and it also has the value and the and the distance so it's two there's two arrays in here i'm i'm compiling the two arrays so that i have a, a wave that is formed with uh, the sum of three waves the idea is to have a wave in which i can analyze afterwards so if i so i will have one wave with the a frequency of one hertz and an amplitude of three a second one with an with, with a frequency of four hertz and an amplitude of one and a frequency of seven and a, an amplitude of 0.5 so when i run it will make the the three waves and it will add the values of three waves and the result would be a composed wave with those uh, three waves inside so this is the the python node uh, it was it's what returned from the python this one is the the that one they, this converted to lab view because this is a x y graph and this is the a waveform graph uh, to calculate an fft in uh, lab view you have to have a waveform graph so with this you can calculate in in python the fft so you can see in here defi exactly defined uh, what is the frequency that i inputted and the, also the amplitudes in uh, lab view when you analyze in lab view uh, it's uh, more uh, difficult to see the the results so you have in here seven four and uh, one frequency but there's also something in here and uh, so lab view, uh, the, the code in lab view may, may not be as clean as a python probably with some some alterations you could have it and uh, also if you use the python uh, in lab view you have uh, a module that is uh, added a new uh, an add-on that is paid and that makes uh, fft's uh, more correctly let's say so this is the the free version and the, in python you have better results than in a free love you although in love you you can have the dead on so this is the case where you are using uh, the when you are you are using some of those libraries because numpy uh, is to use the it's used to define the the fft and the to calculate the signs so you have this it uh, this makes an, an the arrays of values and mix uh, calculate the sign with the other array so numpy is very easy to do that you could do, use instead of numpy cpy it's the same matplotlib that i'm using here it's just to test because in a, in here in the main so this is the main to test i I can I use the uh, plot but plot leave it's in here so if I run this code uh, it develops it sends me it sends me this and this is what it's returned to to lab view now the so in this I I, I saw I talk about using Python libraries and the advantage in analyzing data using Python instead of using the free lab view free not free uh, the part that it's not an add-on now I will test the, the same thing with the with image manipulation so in lab view you can manipulate images sending them to Python to man to, to have the results. So the, the code that I have for image manipulation, it's in here. Let's close this. Okay, so 
our this this code it's in here so the code is uh, is uh, for image manipulation so let's see so he asks for a file if uh, if that file uh, so if that file is not a JPEG or JPEG, uh, he, he makes something of it. And if it's PNG, it uses another uh, method to alter the image. If it's not any one of them, uh, it says that it's not defined, so it doesn't do anything. With that, he transformed that into a, an array, a 2D array, so it uses this this feature from uh, LabVIEW that converts that into a pix map. And that pix map is used in, in Python node. And it returns it. And after the returning, it transforms that pix map into an image for LabVIEW. So if I'll, if I'll do it, if I'll put it to run. So it will ask me for the file. And uh, I have files in here. So this is from uh, Game of Thrones. So maybe some. <laughs> so he sends this image to Python, and Python analyzes it, uh, is analyzing it, and it it is adding the to the image the point where it finds the faces. This can be ch easily changed. So in the code. As you can see in the code, this, this is the image manipulation. So there are certain things that uh, may may that are automatically for all the images. So you have to convert the image. So you have functions that convert the image because the this code the the this uh, this algorithm only works with uh, images that are grayscaled. So it it uh, receives the image and it converts it to a grayscale image. Afterwards, it can detect the images, so it it detects the faces. And to detect the faces, uses this this file. This is the R code cascade file. This is made. It's like a, a machine learning uh, algorithm, so you can build it. There are a lot of them in the in the web available. The ones I'm the one I uh, this is commented. This is a commented, so this is not used. So and the one that is used is front face, front face. So it detects the faces. But if I want, I for instance, if I want to detect the eye, I'll put the training set as a as this R code. Cascade, and uh, when when it's running the code again, let's see if the code is running again. If I'll run the code again, uh, I don't know if if it's with the same image. It no, it doesn't detect. Uh, well, uh, let's see if in this. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I I forgot to save the file. That's why it's not working. So save the file. And so let's try. So it doesn't detect the eyes because these eyes are very narrow. But I I will try with another image because I think this. No, no. Let's see what what image there are images where where. No, what I, I he doesn't see the eyes. No, it's not. Uh, so you can test uh, the harsh code because it's depending on what you are doing. For instance, uh, if you are, I I know that they use something similar in uh, bottling beer. I think. So that you have harsh code to detect if the bottle is full or not, and so it uh, after that the love you can knowing if the bottle is not is full or not, it can send it to another conveyor, for instance, that to to fill it more or to pack it. 
uh, now I will test this. I have. So this is uh, uh, something I made. So it's using our code to detect the faces and the eyeglasses. So uh, for that to you to work, I will uh, deactivate my camera because it's not working. It will it won't work with it. So if I'll start the, this code, uh, I will have to wait a little bit. Uh, uh, okay, it's in the other ones. So this code uh, do, does this, and uh, as you can see, the uh, it tries to see where my face is, and uh, sometimes they you can see my my eyes. But uh, as I'm not looking for that, <laughs> may have some. Uh, Problem. So this could could be to sent to to love you to to uh, to so in conclusion, uh, love you Python uh, the love you Python integration is easy to use. So the Python is very easy to use in in love you. Due to the nature of the of the Python. Uh, it's there are very good uh, reasons to use Python in LabVIEW. To, for instance, the main I think the main uh, thing that uh, Python has that LabVIEW may have uh, less is uh, data treatment and uh, machine learning. Uh, further developments that I, I haven't made, but I would like to. To explore its machine learning that I spoke and its CUDA, because LabVIEW can't uh, send uh, code to to be executed in CUDA drivers, but this CUDA is only available in NVIDIA. So if it's uh, an AMD uh, graphic card, it's not available. CUDA is only for NVIDIA, but but it's very CUDA is very good to. To make uh, calculation, simple calculations like uh, adding a, a matrix of 1000 by 1000, it's extremely fast. So now I will wrap this up, and uh, I, I'm I'm open to some questions. I don't know. What about Python calling a love UVI? Uh, uh, hi, Fred. Uh, so it's possible to use the the calling of a uh, of Python of calling of a love UVI. So I never tested it, but I know that uh, I saw that already in presentations that it's easy to to in Python call some VIs. I don't know if you have any more questions regarding or uh, any doubts. That was awesome, um, Luis. Really yes. appreciate you uh, putting that together. Um, I think no it's also amazing that uh, the name comes from Monty Python. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, I didn't knew that. <laughs> and uh, one thing, one thing uh, funny is that Python stack stick uh, because if you see the the symbol, it's two snakes. So they are thinking in Python as two snakes, but in Python it came from Monty Python. But uh, the the part of of the snakes, uh, uh, I think it's it's stuck because yeah. for instance the, the package is called Anaconda. That's also a Python. It's also yeah. a snake, and uh, you have Miniconda. So everything is related to the snakes <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. And I thought the vision stuff was really interesting as well, because um, yeah. presumably you could um, develop your own. XML files with your own sort of training in them, if you yeah. wanted to. So, the, uh, I, as you as you saw, uh, uh, the the let's see where you have the code. I don't have the code in here. I, I closed the code. So, sorry. <laughs> no so, if you see the code, yeah, let's open the old all the rest. Uh, if you are you were mentioning that uh, uh, 
something very complex. Okay. Let's do it in the complex. Okay. So in in a complex, you can send you can ask for anything in Python. I think. I don't know if that answers to your question or not. Uh, can you could you repeat it? Probably. Oh, it was, it was if you you know with the training sets that you had in the vision example. Yeah. Uh, in the vision example, you, you can, can develop you can, uh, create your yeah, own XML you, files with yeah. the training sets. You can uh, you can develop XML files, yeah. so you can uh, you have to to make a program that uh, analyzes your image and uh, it transforms it in uh, grayscale because this one works in grayscale, mm -hmm. and uh, you say what you are you are finding, and after that it will compile it. Yeah, I'm presuming there's lots of other. Um, but, there are lots of, of these files already on the web, so it's easy yeah. to, to download. Maybe uh, you've got a few uh, questions in the chat going back up yeah. to Luis. He's asked, is it efficient to call Python iteratively for video processing or will it have a hit on performance? Uh, so uh, it's it's uh, I, what I saw that interactively you can call Python. And uh, there is not not a very big hit in performance, but these algorithms to treat uh, it's a little bit hard on the hardware. So the performance is not lost due to the fact that you are calling Python. Uh, the performance is called because the, if you are sending a video video feed, he, he has to analyze every image. But if you only say send the images, for instance. One image from uh, two or two seconds for apart, uh, you won't notice the performance lag. So mm. when I saw when I made the, this test with, with Python that was only Python in uh, in Python uh, to analyze the image, you saw that there was a little bit of lag. So that lag would be best to love you. I don't know if that answers to your question, but the the performance downgrade is only dependent because this is a very intensive task the, to analyze the picture, regardless of the software you're using. Yeah, regardless, uh, because this is in Python. Uh, it's it's hard in Python. So, love you to Python. It's quick to to send. Let's say the problem is in Python. Mm -hmm. Analyzing it in it's uh, it's very intensive. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, I have uh, another question: Linux and Compact Rio earlier. Uh, no, I haven't tried Python on Compact Rio. I know that in in Compact Rio it works. Uh, An National Instrument says that it's not very uh, compatible with RT. So. Uh, when you are uh, making an RT love you, uh, maybe calling uh, the Python. They say that it's not very compatible, but I think it works. Uh, the, I have some some persons that said that they have good experience, but I never tried it. So, is it possible to include Python and Python packages in a LabVIEW application installer? Yes. Uh, in an installer, you have to. There are there are uh, options to to add some install uh, previous installations so that you can install a Python pack Python. And uh, regarding to Python packages, uh, when you have a program, you can uh, put it uh, the uh, minimal specifications, and when it, the program is run, it will uh, pip install that those minimal minimum uh, uh, packages necessary. Great stuff. If there's any other questions, then drop them in now. Yeah, sure. But it looks like that's that's the lot. Um, again, thanks very much, Louise. Really appreciate that. It was a really interesting presentation and good to see some, uh, some practical uh, examples as well, um, walking okay. through that. So thanks very much. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much.